I, I love that these are the things I'm now known uh, for. So did anybody, uh, I'll just say them quickly, the Wienermobile, ice cream, and menopause. Those three yeah. things, <laughs> any, anything that happens in the news about if any of those topics, I am called upon. Uh, did anybody hear about the horrible atrocity that happened to the Wienermobile this week? Yes. yes. Uh, who, okay, so for those of you who didn't hear it, I will get into my story, and it has nothing to do with a, let's face it, dick truck. Um, <laughs> uh, the Wienermobile was renamed the, oh, pains me to say this, Frankmobile. <laughs> and I just feel like, boo, I know, I just feel like they should have left it with like, Weenie Bago, Lamborghini, like there are so <laughs> many better names for it. And I want you to know, those of us in the hot dogger community, <sighs> it is truly the worst. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thank you. I, I love when I can find out who's pro pun and who finds them pun bearable. So, um, so <laughs> okay. So four years ago, so this is pre-COVID, I am sitting on a plane and I am staring at this small notebook and I am tearing pages out of it like a mad woman. Now, a few months earlier, I had gone through a really horrible breakup and I was just in such a low place. I felt so alone and that was compounded by the fact that I had been working from home before it was cool and, and fashionable. Uh, I knew Zoom before everybody in this room. And, um, and it got to the point where when I was working from home for, um, you know, years on end that I befriended my UPS uh, guy, George. He was great. Uh, we became buds. He came to a bunch of my shows. I brought him home for Passover, like you do, with your <laughs> favorite uh, delivery guy. And, um, but I was just like in such a low place and I was like, you know what, I just, I, I feel so alone and I just really want to feel connected to people. And so, um, so I'm staring at this notebook and I'm, I'm thinking about doing something I, I think is absolutely outrageous, um, but I, I, I decide I have to go for it. And so what I do is at the very top of this notebook I write, let's create a story together. And I write this whole uh, like paragraph, I say the whole point of this, uh, feel free to add a word or a few words, whatever you want, the whole point of this is for us to have fun. My name is Robin Gelfenbein, and uh, so if they wanted to like look me up and be like, who is this? What is this? They, they could find out who I was. And I said, um, I said, you know, once this notebook has reached the back of the plane, please return it to seat 10C. And, uh, and so I, I dream big. I, I was like, my hope, and I wrote this, I said, my hope is by the end, um, by the time I get this, that I can go up and read the story that we've created together on the PA. I know it's nuts. <laughs> But I was like, <laughs> I was like, I'm gonna try. It was, by the way, it was a very, very small plane. There were maybe like 40, 45 passengers on this plane. So I looked to the guy sitting next to me. And I'm just so, so nervous. And I, I say to him, uh, hi, just, I've never done this before, but um, I just wanted to see if you wanted to um, be part of this story. And I started this story, I had written um, uh, Once Upon a Time, there was a woman who, and he, and I, so I look at him and I said, uh, do you, do you want to do this? And he looks at me and he looks down at the notebook and it looks, and he looks at me again. And then I realized that English is not his first language. And I was like, oh my God, this is going to take so damn long to go around the plane. Um, and so I'm explaining and then he's like, oh, and he, he gets it. And he goes, oh, that's really nice. And so he writes something down and he hands it back to me and he's like, is this okay? And all he wrote was, had lunch in the park. So the start of the story was once upon a time, there was a woman who had lunch in the park. I said, yeah, that's great. I said, um, can you just like pass it over to the lady across the aisle? Because the way that the plane was laid out was I was sitting on the right, there were two seats like down, you know, all the rows on the right were two seats. And on the left, it was just one. And uh, the woman sitting across from us was like hunched over her computer, just like clickety clack, clickety clack, like just hitting, she was, she was busy. And she was like hitting every key with like so much force. And I was like, do you mind just passing it over to her? And he was like, I'd rather not. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't blame him. And so I, I like lean over and I whisper, I'm like, excuse me, excuse me. And she's like, what? And I'm like, oh God. And I, I'm like, hey, and I explain what I'm doing. And she goes, 
okay. She rips the, the notebook out of my hand and she writes something down and she hands it back to me and I don't even look at it because I wanted to be surprised because I was like, I want to see what the story is by the time it gets back. And um, I said, can you just pass it to the woman in front of you? And she goes, no, I'm busy. I'm like, okay, fine, fine, fine. <laughs> so, and I was like, oh my God, is this thing ever going to make it around the plane? Like, am I ever going to see this thing again? Is, is, like, is this like the end of it? You know, and so um, I... <laughs> look between the seats in front of me. <laughs> I go, psst. <laughs> psst. And this woman slowly like turns her head back. <laughs> I was like, hi, uh, my name's Robin. I explain what I'm doing. And she goes, that sounds like fun. I was like, great. I said, and if, when it's done, can you pass it to the next person? And by the way, I had written it in such a way that people who are introverted, which is clearly not me, um, <laughs> wouldn't have to engage with another passenger. So she writes something down, she passes it across the aisle, and then the, from there, it, it's off. And I was like, oh my God, what's gonna happen? This is so exciting, I've never done anything like this. Oh my God. And so, 45 minutes later, it makes it back to clickety-clack lady. And she goes, I already did it! And I was like, <laughs> I'm like, lady, I'm trying to not call attention to what's happening because there's only one flight attendant on this plane and I just was like, I don't want him to see what's happening. I also was like, I don't want to have to babysit this notebook for every single person on the plane. You're like, hi, my name's Rob, and explain over and over and over. And while they like fill it out, but like, so can I take your trash and where are you flying to? Or I mean, where are you flying from? So anyway, she hands it back to me. I turn to the people behind me and I say to them like what I'm doing and they're like, I was like, can you pass it behind them, behind you? They're like, I'm like, okay. So I looked to the man sitting next to me. He is fast asleep. And I was like, oh, shoot. I really don't want to wake him up. But I do have to go to the bathroom. So I, like, get up, and I very quietly, like, crawl over him. I head to the back of the plane. I explain it to the, to the two guys in the very last rows. This plane is full. There's, like, 45 people, like I mentioned, all international, uh, mo or sorry, mostly international um, passengers, they fill it out, I go back to my seat. Another like half an hour come, uh, flies by, pun intended, sorry, I didn't, I'm not, I didn't mean to say that, but I did, no. Um, so it ends up back to me and I open it up and I'm like, oh my God, there's an actual story here. This is incredible. And I would say like maybe like a third of the people had filled it out. So now is the moment of truth. So I race to the front of the plane. I introduced myself to the flight attendant. I said, hi, I'm Robin, what's your name? He's like, I'm Valentine. I'm like, nice to meet you. Here's the thing. So um, I explained what I did. I was like, do you want to be a part of it? And he's like, no. Okay. So I said, I know this, I said, uh, I was just wondering, like, would it be possible for me to um, read the story we just created together over the PA? And he looks at me, and then he's like looking at my notebook, and he looks at me again, and I'm waiting for him to say, like, are you out of your mind, lady? Like, it's against FAA regulations for us to even be talking right now. And uh, he goes, well, how long is it going to take? I said, I don't know, a minute and a half, two minutes. And he goes, okay. And I was like, shut up, shut up. <laughs> and so he gets on the PA, and he's like, ladies and gentlemen, there's a woman who wants to read some story you all created together. I was like, holy shit. And so he hands me the PA, and the PA basically looks like a 1960s phone cradle. There's like a button in the middle of it. And so I pressed down on it, and, uh, and I was like, hi everybody, my name is Robin. And I said, I'm the woman from seat 10C uh, who circulated the notebook. And as soon as I start talking, like, phones go up, which I don't know why I didn't think that, that was going to happen, so I was like, oh God, like now like, I'm being recorded, that's kind of weird, but okay. So I, I start to, uh, I was like, thank you for participating, uh, I'm so glad that you did, and if, if I mess up some of your words, like please correct me, and, uh, and so I start to read the story, and I actually brought it, um, <laughs> and um, so <laughs> I didn't bring the notebook because I forgot, um, but I, I did, I have the story here, so anyway. Um, but all of a sudden I hear like wee, wee, wee. And so there's all this feedback. I was like, oh shit. And Valentino was like, well, he's like, you know, you should sit down. I was like, no, I need to be one with the people. This is our moment. <laughs> so I'm standing there and then we hit some turbulence. And so I'm like bouncing as I'm reading this story. And so I will, I won't bounce for the entirety of the story. I'll just read you parts of it. So 
As you know, once upon a time, there was a woman who had lunch in the park. She was on vacation. This was the first vacation she had ever taken. That last line was from Clickety Clack Lady. I was like, huh. <laughs> Awfully pleasant on the page. <laughs> and then it moves on, and she was looking for the best meatball sub in America. Her first stop was New York. Then we take a little bit of a detour, and this person writes, I've rarely flown, but getting on this small plane has been unexpectedly okay. <laughs> Hope to make it back to St. Louis. And I was like, uh, she think this is like a journal entry or like, oh, air, you know, like the airlines are cir circulating guest books now. I was like, I don't know what this lady was thinking. Anyway, so back to the story. And uh, the next person writes, I'm not sure NYC is the best place for great meatballs. Certainly meatheads. I'm like, waka, waka, waka. <laughs> and then she, they, it goes on. It's like she hopped in a cab. She went down to Little Italy. She ends up in a parade. And then she meets somebody from Mars. <laughs> who is, dis this is what they wrote, disguising himself as a fellow human. Little did people know he had blue blood running through his veins and a cure for all the terrible diseases plaguing planet Earth. I know. Then the next person writes, uh, she said, uh, she, he, asked her, he asked her if she would go with him to watch a Broadway show. She said she would if he would donate some of his blue blood and get her a meatball sub. <laughs> 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 then it, it, there's, they, they write a few more things, and then at the very end, they write, um, the Martian had a weird feeling that he never experienced before. The feeling of knowing this lady for years, whereas she was a complete stranger. Was it what humans call love? <laughs> yeah, let's give it up for American Airlines Flight 797. <laughs> so I finished reading it, and I make my way back to my seat, and this woman stops me, and she says, I wrote the part about the Martians. I was like, oh my god, I love that part. And another person stops me, uh, and this guy, he's like, I wrote the part about the meatball sub. I was like, oh my God, I love how the meatball sub came back at the end of the story. He was like, me too, like, high five. And so, <laughs> and then I'm making my way closer and closer to my seat, and this guy stops me, and he says, Robin, I just had the worst week at work. I, I couldn't wait to get on this plane, just get home and just sleep. He said, but as soon as I got your notebook, you completely restored my faith in humanity. And I was so touched, and I just wanted to leap into this man's arms. And not just because he was incredibly hot. <laughs> <laughs> and so I walk back to my seat, and the man sitting next to me asks me for my email, because unbeknownst to me, he had taken photos of the entire thing, and the man behind us had taken video of it. And... Um, as we are, oh, and I forgot to mention, as soon as I was done with the story, I heard, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be landing this plane shortly. And I was like, oh my God, the pilots waited for me to finish the story. <laughs> <laughs> they wanted to know what happened. And so as we're pulling, or as we're flying into LaGuardia, I'm just thinking about the entire experience. And I just could not believe that that whole thing made me feel like so much less alone so much more connected, and it completely restored my faith in humanity, too. Thank you. Robin Gelfenbein, everybody.